Hello, and welcome to this film of Stanford's Walk of Witness on Good Friday, 2016. Here, members of local churches will follow the figure of Christ carrying his cross through the town's market. But before we see Jesus himself, one of the local clergy sets the scene with a reading from the Bible. We listen for God's word to us in a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers round him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Amen. The drama begins as Jesus, beaten and flogged, is marched to the court where his fate will be decided. His accuser, Caiaphas, the high priest. His judge, Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Let's see what happens. Well, here he is, high priest, the man of the moment. I must say, he doesn't look much like a threat to national security to me. In fact, I reckon you probably brought charges against him because you're envious of his popularity. Governor, it is a fact that every time he opens his mouth, it's bad news. He stirs up the crowds and tells them not to pay their taxes to the emperor. And he claims to be a king the king of the Jews. If you do nothing, and news of this gets back to Rome, the emperor will think you're incompetent or a traitor. You be careful. You need to get rid of him. I don't want to do this, but I can see your logic. Jesus of Nazareth, you'll be taken from here to a place of execution where you'll be nailed to a cross and left to die. And may God at least have mercy upon your soul because your body's going to hell and back. There. Happy now? Take him away. And so the grim walk of death begins as Jesus shoulders his cross and begins to tread what some have called the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrows. Jesus has collapsed and so the guards have forced a stranger and his young friend to carry the cross instead. Jesus reaches the place of execution and is prepared for death, forced to kneel. Robe removed. Placed on the cross to die. And then we hear eyewitness accounts of what happened next. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they nailed Jesus to the cross. And people passing by jeered. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and build it again in three days? Right, show us your stuff, prove it. 
get yourself out of this. If you really are the Son of God, come down from that cross now. And the priests, too, were having a great time poking fun at him. He saved others, but it appears he can't save himself. But if he comes down from the cross, we'll all become believers. By now it was noon, and the whole sky became extremely dark. The darkness lasted three hours, a kind of total blackout. Midway through the afternoon, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But then something happened in the temple. The curtain, the great heavy veil, all 60 feet of it, was ripped apart, torn down the middle from top to bottom. And from the cross, Jesus said, it's done, accomplished, finished. Then he said, Father, into your hands I now place myself utterly. And with those words, he died. And when the Roman captain standing in front of Jesus saw that he had stopped breathing, he said, this has to be the Son of God. Young medics certify the time of death, three o'clock on the nail. Remove his corpse, place it on a stretcher. And so he's taken away, gone for good, out of sight, out of mind. Well, not out of mind for one man. Excuse me, Governor. My dear High Priest, what do you want? That man just executed. Jesus of Nazareth. Would you put a guard on his tomb? For heaven's sake, why do you want a guard on his tomb? When he was alive, he said he knew he'd be put to death. He also said that three days later, he would be raised from the dead. If his disciples steal the body, they can then say it actually happened. Can you imagine what would happen then? His credibility would be out of this world. He was trouble for us when he was alive. But if people believe that, this Jesus could be even more trouble for us now he's dead. He's really got under your skin, hasn't he? Very well. Take a guard, put it on his tomb. Cement him in for all I care. Those squaddies are tough. Nobody's going to steal his corpse on their watch. Jesus of Nazareth is going to lie there and rot. If that tomb is ever found to be empty, well, it'll have to be an act of God. Have you ever been locked in? Have you ever been in a place where you felt cut off? What did it feel like to be there? Maybe it was the exhilaration of potholing and finding your way through subterranean trails, inlets, crevices. Or maybe even the thrill of the escapologist like Harry Houdini, who knew how to get free and knew that all would be well. Either way, locked in, alone, dark, cut off. But nothing like the experience of Jesus. The seal on the tomb of Jesus was to ensure that he was indeed dead and to secure the site. Pilate's soldiers 
the chief priests, the elders, all inspected the body to verify that he was in fact truly dead. The ignorance, the arrogance that led them to believe that they had controlled the Son of God. I wonder, as we stand here this Good Friday, if there are areas in our lives that have been kept sealed and secured in an attempt to prevent God from acting change within us. The religious and political leaders of Jesus' day remembered that Jesus said he would rise again. Yes, they heard the truth, but they didn't understand its significance. Think about all that Jesus offered during his time and ministry on earth. I am the light of the world. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus is God's promise of hope for all humanity. When he died and was then buried, creation was shocked and his disciples were devastated. If that grave is ever to be found empty, it will have to be an act of God. And oh, what an act of God. I can trust a saviour like that. What about you? Standing at the foot of the cross, as our saviour taught us, let us pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Pilate said, If that tomb is ever found to be empty, it'll be an act of God. He spoke better than he knew. A day or so later, mourners were told, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Thank you for watching.